Welcome to Ballot Battleground Nevada. I'm your host, Ben Marjot, a reporter at KRNV News 4 in Reno. I'm passionate about making politics in this critical battleground state more digestible to the average voter and pushing past the talking points to press politicians for answers. On this show, we take deep dives into the people, ideas, and debates shaping silver state politics. Clean up the voter rolls. You hear that phrase often these days. The push to remove people from the voter rolls has been accelerated by the baseless claims of widespread voter fraud. But of course, almost everyone agrees it is a good thing to keep an accurate, up-to-date list of registered voters to try and prevent instances that do chip away at people's faith in the electoral system. With the primary well behind us, routine voter roll maintenance is underway right now. So how do election officials clear people off? How are they limited by state and federal laws? Why is it difficult by design to remove someone from the voter rolls? How can you help? We're going to answer all of those questions and more this week with Nevada's top election official, Secretary of State Cisco Aguilar. If you've been listening to this show for a while now, you've heard it before. But this week, a deep dive on the ongoing effort to clean the voter rolls and why it's so critical. Here's our extended interview recorded on Friday. Cisco Aguilar, the Nevada Secretary of State, joining us now on the pod. Cisco, thank you so much for doing this again. We appreciate it. Hey, I'm glad to do it. Thanks, Ben. Thanks for having me. Look, any opportunity to educate voters about what we're doing in the Secretary of State's office and what's upcoming in the November general, we're really excited to talk about. Most importantly, to educate the voters and the Swifties on your experience in (laughs) Munich, Germany. I saw this on social media and was just blown away by your photo. Tell me what it was like when at the Eras Tour in Germany, what, last weekend? Yes, on Sunday. So I went to the Sunday show. Obviously, there was a Saturday show. But one of the, first of all, it's a religious experience. You know, (laughs) I've listened to Taylor, been a fan, but you know, not the fan that some people are and to finally have the experience i have to say like i now understand the swifty movement there is passion there's determination but the most important part is the hope and inspiration that people have for our country for our artistic talent that exists and it was just phenomenal and the amount of people that were there was just amazing like seventy-four thousand people in an arena But outside the arena in Munich at Olympic Park, there's this massive hill. And there were 50,000 people. I saw that on social media. That was incredible. It was insane. So you add those two components. That's 125,000 people that were there to hear Taylor, but also to just to celebrate life. I couldn't quite make out your wrist. Where's your friendship bracelet? Oh, it's actually super cool. (laughs) So this is really, you know, we did an event at the NBA Summer League in Las Vegas And we invited a bunch of the voting organizations to be in the concourse. We had Vet the Vote there, trying to recruit poll workers. Vote.org was there. Power to the polls. Like, it was just an incredible thing. But Vet, so this is Vote.org. There we go. This is an audio platform, so it might not work, but I love it. (laughs) Yeah, so it's, sorry, I just, but. No, it's good. I'm the one that asked, hey. And Vote.org is the organization that has partnered in the past with Taylor Swift to get young people registered to vote and. I thought, what an most appropriate thing. But, you know, yeah. another experience at the, you know, Taylor Swift was we were standing in line for quite a while for the merch products. And there was a group of individuals walking down the line and they were Americans living abroad. And they were checking with everybody in line to let them know and educate them about registering to vote to vote abroad that they had. And so when they got to me, I was like, hey, I'm, Cisco. I'm the secretary of state in Nevada. And they just went crazy. They were just so excited that we educated them on what it takes for somebody, for a Nevadan living overseas to be able to vote in our elections. And they were super pumped about what access we had for voters, both through mail ballots, but also to through the digital ease system. They were blown away. So it was really cool. Now look at you always bringing it back to elections somehow. So <laughs> let's pivot into our main conversation and topic for today. How many fortnights until the election for all these tortured elections departments out there? Oh, you know, I don't look at it that way. What I look (laughs) at is the number of days until the first ballots go out and we're less than 50 now. 
Wow. It's coming up quick. It is. I think it's like 95, 96 actual days, but yeah, for you guys, it has started much sooner than that. Today's conversation though, we are talking about Nevada's voter rolls and the efforts to try and clean them up and what that looks like here as we approach this 2024 general election. So let's start really basic here. What are the voter rolls for folks who might not know they're hearing this term for the first time? What are the voter rolls? Voter Rolls is just the database that contains all the information about our registered voters in Nevada. And you'll see in the recent numbers, we have over 2 million registered voters here in Nevada. So right now, that data and that information is maintained at the county level. So we have 17 different systems, 17 different processes for that data. What we're asking for right now is to voters take a few minutes, go onto their county website, and make sure that information is up to date and it's accurate. You can actually go to vote.nv.gov and also verify that information. Look, it is the responsibility of the county clerks. It's the responsibility of the Secretary of State's office to maintain those voter rolls and that database. But we can't do this alone. We need the help of the voters as well. We want to make sure that every single person in Nevada receiving a mail ballot is the most accurate person receiving that information. We Look, we don't want duplicate ballots out there because people have moved. We want to have the most secure, safe, and accessible elections in Nevada, which we do have. We know Nevada's elections are safe, secure, and accessible. But we need the voters' help to participate in this process as well. The 2 million registered voters is a huge increase from, let's say, a decade ago when there were around a million voters in the state. In part, that's because our state obviously has grown significantly, but also people are now automatically registered to vote through the DMV. And so that, to me, makes it even more critical and important to keep the voter rolls up to date and accurate because there are so many more people on them and people that are registered automatically through the DMV might be less likely to vote. So does that make this issue even even more critical with that change? It does. It also, too, we have a very transient population, right? And so we need to make sure we need to be more active than most states to ensure that those voter rolls are accurate. And we're working on it from a state perspective. The VREMS project, Voter Registration Election Management System, is going to be a significant increase in our ability to manage those voter rolls because Instead of having those 17 different systems that I mentioned earlier, we will have one unified system that manages it for the entire state. So we'll be able to catch duplicates that exist between counties. We will make sure we will also make it easier for that voter experience to be stronger so that people want to engage in this process. Right now, it's a bit complicated for voters to figure out, but we want to streamline that and make it as easy as possible for people to update their information, but also to be engaged in the election process. We want people to know when their ballot leaves the clerk's office. We want them to know when it hits the post office or when it hits their mailbox and vice versa. These are some of the new technology things that we can do with VREMS, but also create a unified system across the entire state. So the process is unique. It's not unique in Clark versus Washoe. It is across the state a unified system that makes it better for the voter and for the state of Nevada. Let's go back a little bit to, there was a lot of drama that your office followed as it pertained to Washoe County certifying the results of a couple of recounts that were done here back in June. And I think the drama spilled into July. But um, a talking point that we heard a lot from people that didn't want county commissioners to certify the results was that the voter rolls aren't clean. And they pointed to this stat that, you know, around 25,000 ballots were returned to the county as undeliverable, mail undeliverable in the June primary. I mean, when you hear that figured, is that worrisome to you? Or is that a number that we might expect for a county of our size when, as you mentioned, so many people are transient here in Nevada? What I think is pretty important for people to understand is there are blackout periods in which the counties cannot update the voter rolls. And during it's 90 days before an election. And in those 90 days, people are making transitions. They are leaving, coming to the state, And so things change. You know, Nevadans don't sit tight for a long time. They're they're moving for various purposes, mostly for work or for family issues. And so there are 90 days when the clerks cannot control or make additions to those voter rolls or make deletions or 
create inactive files. They are stuck with what the voter rolls are 90 days prior to an election because that is the federal law. And there is an intention behind that to ensure every Nevadan and every American continues to have access to the ballot box. We'll get to that deadline in just a moment. Before that, though, there was a Republican county commissioner that specifically was referencing the voter rolls uh, when it comes to why he voted well, against it, certification. They should really understand what it takes to maintain the voter rolls before they make the accusations or the statements that they're making, because they think if they understood the process and the federal laws that exist for a particular reason, they will understand why the voter rolls are the way they are. Look, they're not perfect, but the goal is to ensure that every American and every Nevadan has access to the ballot box. And that is a constitutional fundamental right. And you cannot mess with a fundamental right. We actually have that clip. We wanted to play it for you and kind of get your reaction to it. So let's roll the clip. The voter rolls is the foundational basis for everything we do. If the voter rolls are not correct, nothing else matters. AI doesn't matter. Machines don't matter. Who's printed on the ballot doesn't matter. We've got situations where ballots are going out to places that they shouldn't be going to. Clean up the voter rolls. That's what we need to do here. And until we do that here, we're not going to get accurate information. So the insinuation that he made also in that meeting was that, you know, if the voter rolls are unclean, it's the foundational basis for the whole election and the whole election might be fraudulent. And I don't know if he said it in exactly those words. How would you respond to that, though? Look, there are checks and balances throughout the entire process and through the system that are there and designed for a particular reason. Those checks and balances ensure that every Nevada vote is secure and safe and that it is actually the right voter who is casting that ballot. What he's doing are theatrics, and theatrics play to his constituency that he's trying to serve, which is the disservice of the remaining constituents in Washoe County and throughout the state of Nevada. We have talked numerous times with Commissioner Clark about these issues. He's emailed us. We've answered those questions for him. And some of the things he raised during his comments are questions that we've answered for him and have clarified. But I understand his responsibility he feels he has to his constituency. But again, it's a disservice to the rest of Nevada and to the rest of citizens of Washoe County. I think it's, look, he also controls the power of the purse at Washoe County. He should, be in, should have been investing in Washoe County Elections Department long ago. They're making great investment now. They're building that capacity. They're building additional security into the system. But it's happening because we have a strong county commission collectively and a strong county management and a clerk who understands what it needs to do to improve the process. And those things are happening. Let's talk about how counties are cleaning up the voter rolls now, whether or not Washoe County might not have had the resources to do it as fully as they do now because of a, a lack of staffing. They are fully staffed now in the Washoe County Registrar's of uh, Registrar getting new equipment office. too. And yeah. So that's great. I was there yesterday visiting and got to see the new ballot sorter, got to new, see the new scanners. They are building the capacity to run even more efficient elections, which is only a benefit to Washoe County and the rest of the state of Nevada. But that was a strategic decision that was made by county management and county leadership to say, hey, we need to improve some of these processes, and they are making those processes stronger. When a county commissioner decides to undermine that, they're actually doing a disservice to the entire county, not just to their constituents. And so that process is underway now. Counties, 17 counties, all of them sent out postcards to uh, 156,000 some voters. Who are the voters that are getting those postcards in the mail? It's about almost 8% of active voters in the state. Why were they sent a postcard? What does it say? What should they do with it if it makes it to them? One, it's verifying their address and it's verifying their contact information to make sure that they are still a registered and active voter in Nevada. Again, those 156,000 are going to be extremely helpful in making sure we're targeting the right voter in our universal mail ballot program. Again, that's where we need that voter engagement. Again, when you look at 8% of 2 million people, 157,000 voters, again, if you look, this is a process that has to be remain open and transparent 
and fair because it goes back to that fundamental right to vote. And we want to make sure that we are ensuring the access to those 157 continues to occur. We also don't have an interest in sending mail ballots to an address to an individual who no longer lives there. That is of no service to anyone. And that's why these are going out to say, hey, are you still wanting to be an active registered voter in Nevada? Is this your accurate information? If it is, please respond to us or go on and update that information so that we can continue to engage with you. This is not also about you know, the pre-election process. This is the post-election process when a ballot may need to be cured. We want to make sure that every ballot we receive gets counted. And if a ballot needs to be cured, we need to have the most up-to-date information for that voter so that the county clerk can contact them and say, hey, there is an issue with your ballot. We need to verify X information or we need you to come do X, Y, and Z. And were those sent to people who, because I know there's a rule that has to do with having to vote in two consecutive general Mm -hmm. elections or having not voted in two consecutive general right. elections, are those the people They're that- They're in the inactive this? file, right? And that's verifying, are they truly inactive or they just have not been engaged and they're looking to engage for this general election? We want to make sure that information is correct. And gotcha. it's, it's this, these are the steps that are required in law. This is not us just deciding, hey, let's do this. It's a good thing to do, but it's also too required by law because we want to make sure we are giving every Nevadan who are- Americans, the opportunity to process, participate in our democracy. Does this effort of sending out all these postcards, has that happened every election cycle and maybe there mm-hmm. just hasn't been a focus on it or is this new? No, this has happened every election cycle. We made a conscious effort to bring attention to it because it does require the participation of the voter. This is not a one-way street. This is a two-way street. This requires engagement from the voter. And we're trying to educate the voter that, hey, We need your engagement more than ever. And here are things you can do to make sure that we have the most accurate, up-to-date voter rolls. And if you don't hear back from that person that gets this postcard by, I believe it's August 6th, you're allowed legally under the National Voter Registration Act to remove their name from the rolls, correct? Correct. And they won't receive a mail ballot, but they're still eligible to vote. They can show up at a polling location or they can call the county or engage with the county prior to the election to make sure that there is up-to-date information for that individual. So you anticipate probably a significant reduction in the amount of registered voters, you know, when we get that August active voter list, right? Right. But also too, there are things we are doing as well. In addition to that postcard, we are also sending another postcard to voters to update their signature and to ensure that we have the most accurate signature on file for that voter so that when they show up to a polling location, that vote is even more secure or when we receive a mail ballot and that ballot's being scanned for the signature, the most accurate signature is on file. And that's important too, because my wife says she tries to recreate her signature from <laughs> when she was 18 years old every single time. And it's, you know, it's been, uh, I won't say exactly how many years, but a number of years since then. So, so that's a challenge. So, But also okay. too, the, the poll worker has access to multiple signatures. So they are able to look at that signature and verify it in a way that's appropriate. So let's say the person hasn't been taken off of the voter rolls for one reason or another. They get someone else's ballot in the mail in October when ballots go out. How should voters deal with that? They should return the ballot. They can put, you know, not at this address. They can walk it into the county clerk's office and drop it off. But again, that's our American duty as voters to ensure that the process is safe. This is a team effort. This is not one individual's responsibility. This is a team effort to ensure that we as a community and as a state are working together to ensure that we have the strongest election system in the country. And so your office is encouraging all Nevada voters to go out to go to vote.nv.gov to kind of update your voter registration, whether or not you got that postcard in the mail. But there is a caveat to that that we want to point out that that particular website might be kind of offline for a couple of weeks. Explain yes. why that is and what other methods people can still change their, tweak their registration in that time period. Sure. As I mentioned earlier, we're implementing the voter registration election management system, VRIMS. And we are going to take down, because we are transferring that data to the new system, we are going to have to shut down the current system for a couple of weeks to transition to the new system. 
And once that new system is live, voters will then be able to engage through that new process and that new system, which will be more streamlined and more efficient for voters to use. And again, it builds consistency across the entire state. The entire state will be on one system. We won't have 17 systems out there that some of them are old legacy systems that aren't being supported by the vendor anymore. And also, too, it goes back to the security, right? Some of these legacy systems do not have the cybersecurity protection that it should have. This new system has the strongest and best cybersecurity we can have to ensure that foreign actors are not penetrating the system. How does a voter update their information while we take the system, the online system down? They can walk into their county clerk's office. They can mail their updated information to the county clerk. So there are still ways that they can engage in the process while the system is down. Gotcha. Okay. So critical to get that information updated well before the election. Of course, you can do it right before the election or on election day too, but it makes everything easier for the election officials to do it sooner rather than later. And also too, by law, we if somebody does update their voter registration information after the August 7th date, they may receive two ballots because they did update the information in the system. And we want to make sure that they get the most accurate and up-to-date ballot. And we'll point out here too that it is impossible to vote both of those ballots because right. they have different barcodes that are associated with each voter. And it is the previous ballot is immediately voided and it the system is aware of that. And that's the best thing about VRAMs, the new system too, is because it is statewide, it is in real time. So if somebody tries to register in Clark or and then registers in Washoe, the system is aware and is able to monitor the two counties in real time. All right. A couple other topics not related to the voter rolls before we let you go, since we have the chance to chat with you. We touched on it a little bit earlier, but this issue of certifying the votes for those recounts in Washoe County, your office just within the last couple of days, along with the attorney general's office, you know, had sued uh, a month or so ago, Washoe County, seeking the county to compel the results on the second take, the second try, the county commission does certify those results. But you guys think that that doesn't make this issue moot altogether, that you still want the courts to chime in here. How come? What we want to do is to clarify the law for all the county commissioners that are serving throughout the state of Nevada. And the only body that has the authority to do that is the Nevada Supreme Court. We want the Nevada Supreme Court to make it very clear what the duties and obligations are of the county commissioners throughout the 17 counties. We received a notice last Friday from the Supreme Court asking us why this issue is not moot. We have responded to that notice yesterday evening, and we just sent out a press release about a few minutes ago explaining that we filed and explained our position and made the case of why the Nevada Supreme Court needs to rule on this issue. Again, they are the Nevada Supreme Court of the entire state they are there to interpret law and to make it very clear what the duties and responsibilities are of the county commissioners. And one of the big questions in the wake of all of this drama was, it's one thing if it happens with two local races in Washoe County, what happens if this were to not be certified in the November general election when there's a presidential election, a Senate election on the line, and you guys want that essentially to be not a question at all going into November? Well, I think it's also to the benefit of the county commissioners serving in their local communities is that they can tell their constituents, hey, this is the law. This is what the Supreme Court has interpreted the law to be. I need to my duty and my I made I swore in an affidavit that I would follow the law. And that's what I'm doing. Look, county commissioners can raise issues or concerns about the elections process all day long. And we will sure. address those. And sometimes they do have great idea and great feedback. We listen to every comment that a county commissioner makes about the election process to make sure we are doing the best job we can to make them confident in the system. Again, Nevada runs some of the most secure, safest, and accessible elections in the country. We want to keep that standard. And the only way we can keep that standard is through local engagement with local leaders. There are processes and times for the county commissioners to engage or to discuss with their local clerk about ways for improvement. There are ways for us to engage with the local governments to figure out what we can do to better assist them and their constituents to ensure that they understand how safe and secure our elections are. And one question, last one on this topic that I've had is, 
The county commission ultimately certified the results, but it was four to one. It wasn't unanimous. There's been a Republican county commissioner, Jeannie Herman, that's consistently voted against certifying. Would your hope be that the ruling that comes back from the Supreme Court says that all commission, I mean, that it must be unanimous or just that the commission, regardless of the vote, must certify? Look, that's interpretation of the Nevada Supreme Court. And I think that's also to an understanding of voters. But we are looking at all options right now, both legally and administratively, to deal with some of these issues. And I can't answer that question until the Nevada Supreme Court makes their opinion known. And look, again, this is not a Washoe County issue. This is a state of Nevada issue. This has impact on those 2 million voters who are registered in this state to cast a vote. And again, when a county takes away the ability of a voter to have a voice, that is significant. Yeah, it could have thrown things into chaos in the November general election. So your office certainly hoping that, that it gets resolved before then. And my job as a regulator, Secretary of State, is to do risk mitigation as much as possible. The Supreme Court has a role in that risk mitigation because if we can have that conversation and that discussion now, it makes it very clear to everybody as we move into the general election. Real quick at the end here, ballot questions. We know the voter ID one just got validated. That will be on the ballot in November. When are we going to have the final list and the numbers assigned so we can know yes on X number, no on two, eight, yes on eight, whatever. Those processes are taking place. You know, it's quite an intensive administrative process because, again, you're having to make sure that everybody has the proper engagement. There are committees that need to be developed to write the for and against. And then the other thing we're really focusing on the Secretary of State's office is making sure it's language we all speak. <laughs> sometimes we get these ballot initiatives and we have no idea what it says. I'm a lawyer and sometimes I read this and I go, what is this? <laughs> and you think about the average Nevada citizen and all the obligations and responsibilities that they have. We need to ensure that those ballot initiatives are in plain language. Unfortunately, I don't have control over all the ballot initiatives. The ballot initiatives that are on there through the legislative process are under the control of the Legislative Council Bureau. They have chosen to take the direction they have taken, but I think you will see a clear line between those initiatives that are the responsibility of the Secretary of State's office and the language that is there to describe that initiative and those ballot initiatives that originated on the legislative side. Because again, we need to make sure that all Nevadans understand what their vote means. Secretary of State Cisco Aguilar, really appreciate you coming on and explaining this sometimes wonky in the weeds topic to folks because it has been such a hot topic up here in Washoe County. People want to know how the voter rolls are getting cleaned and maybe why they hadn't can't be as clean as they would like them to do because of various rules and regulations at the state and federal level. It's a complicated topic. We appreciate you breaking it down for our, our audience. Thanks, Ben. And kudos to you, man, for really taking the time and the effort to understand the issues, but more importantly, helping your fellow Nevadans understand what the processes mean and why they exist the way they do. So thank you. Thank you. We'll get you back next time. See you then. Sounds good. Have a good one. One additional note and clarification from the Secretary of State's office, counties cannot do routine list maintenance after that August 7th deadline when the blackout period starts, but voters can still register and update their registration at any time. A special thanks to Secretary Aguilar for joining us once again. I really enjoyed that conversation, and we hope you did too. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. If you have guest ideas, episode ideas, questions, comments, compliments, concerns, anything at all, just shoot us an email to bjmarjot, M-A-R-G-I-O-T-T, at sbgtv.com and put Ballot Battleground Nevada in the subject line. And if you like this show, Tell a friend, tell a family member, coworker, send them the link to our latest episode. That's one of the best ways to share Ballot Battleground Nevada with others, not to mention, as always, leaving a rating and a review. That's all we've got for you this time. Thanks for listening. We'll be back next week.